Pro Playmakers, these are the skills that separate. Welcome to the Pro Playmakers video blog number 16. Today's topic is playing the dots for defensemen. And uh, the dots are actually a really critical area for defensemen tactically to position themselves in good spots so that they put themselves in the best position to both defend and then I'll also show you how using the dots puts you in a great position to also attack or to initiate the attack when you're the puck carrier. So I'll start with the defensive side of the puck. Now the dots as we've alluded to before in our other, our other blogs are great because they're in a straight line and they lead also direct to the post. So this here becomes what we call the interior corridor. So this whole area here, this is what you're trying to protect when you're the defenseman. So what you want to do is try to position yourself where you're inside that area and then you want to deflect all offensive plays away from that area and outside the dots. Now over the years, uh, the, the offense has kind of complied a bit where they are trying to attack outside the dots when they enter. But now what we have to do is figure out ways in which we can protect that area and give you your best chance to position yourself on the defensive side. So the best way to illustrate this is to illustrate it by zone. So in the offensive zone, when you don't have the puck in the place in the offensive zone, if the puck is on this side, obviously you're here. Puck is in this corner, you're on the defensive blue line or the offensive blue line, but you're holding the wall so you can keep pucks in. So now what happens when the play gets the puck gets turned over and now it's time to 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 defend the attack? Well, this is where a lot of defensemen make errors. So what they'll do, most defensemen will just pull off the line here. Well, you're not protecting anything there. You're still against the wall, or even if you shade this way, you're still not in the best area to defend. What you want to see defensemen do from this position is they will pull off the wall and into the dots. So you're actually going to move towards the dot area and come out. Now your defense partner is here and you want to close the gap between you and your partner. When you have that, your defense partner is holding the middle of the ice and you're in the middle inside the dot. So now you're encouraging the play to go outside and you position yourself in where you're protecting the most amount of ice. You discourage plays to go to the middle of the ice because of the closeness between you and your partner which creates a deflecting area uh, a deflecting positioning which allows us to then force plays to the outside so now let's talk about the offensive blue line but now with the puck so let's say the pucks in the corner and now it comes to you so as a defenseman here one of your first priorities is to try to gain positioning to get in line with the dots or inside the dots so you'll see this a lot on a, on a power play where the defenseman will get the puck and then he drags the puck towards the middle of the ice. What he's doing is he's positioning himself where he's a legitimate shot threat. So from here, this guy here, if he shoots from this angle, first it's, it's a very easy place to where you can block because the, defend, the, uh, ta the defensive player is positioning himself in the, path, in the shooting lane. But if you move this way, now you're moving you're harder to, it's harder for the defensive, the defensive player to position himself where he can block the shot, but now you're moving into the interior corridor, which is a best place to attack. And so this is a really valuable move. So anytime you get the puck here and you got a little bit of time, you want to walk the line so that you can get yourself inside that area where you can become more of a threat to score. Now let's talk about the neutral zone. So when you're in the neutral zone now, and the play is coming out, again, defensively. We talked a little bit about that, where you try to get you inside the dots, and then your partner is holding the middle of the ice. Now you have a position where you can deflect plays to the outside. So, And if the play then switches sides, this guy goes in line with the dots, and you move to the middle of the ice. So now you've positioned yourself excellently in terms of defending the rush. When you're in the neutral zone on offense, usually on a regroup, let's say the puck gets, uh, gets chipped out behind you, now you're going to go get it, you've turned here, one of your priorities is to get to the puck to the middle of the ice, so what you do is your partner is going to go back here, and he is going to get the puck here. Now, what's interesting is, is that you want to position yourself where both of you, at the moment when you're trying to make plays, are inside the dot. So, for example, this guy gets the puck now, and he's going to pivot, when he pivots, he's inside the dots, 
this is a better, this is a good passing angle to make a play there. He can also, now you get yourself inside the dots and below the puck. If he decides to pass to you, when you turn up, when you're inside the dots, you now have passing options. What happens to a lot of D is they stay outside the dots. So now the passing angle going up the wall is not very good for the poor uh, winger who's trying to catch it. So you've positioned yourself in a place where the winger has a poor chance of being able to make another play after he gets it from you. You want to get yourself inside the middle of the dot, in, in the middle corridor, or inside the dots. So now the passing angles are really helpful for this for this winger. And that's your responsibility as a puck carrier. Is you have to make a play to somebody who can make another play. Lastly, let's talk about the defensive zone. So again, off the rush, you've been backing up and you're retreating off to defend the rush and you're inside the dots. So what I see a lot happening when this play is starts to enter the blue line, what you'll see is you'll see this defenseman, he comes over too quickly and gives up the middle of the ice. So what will happen is this guy comes across the line, he gets himself drawn outside the dots, which now increases the space between him and his partner. So now that allows a secondary attacker to split the 2D and make a quality play. So once that play comes in here, this becomes very, very dangerous. And that all originates because this defenseman comes outside the dots. Once he comes outside the dots, he stretches out the defense. A lot wider pathways to the net. When you have those pathways to the net, it makes it much more dangerous to defend. What I'd like to talk about is more the transition. So let's say you're the defenseman here in front of the net. So you're holding the post here as your defense as you're defending in defensive zone coverage in this particular corner. When you're the weak side defenseman here and you have a centerman here who's also helping out the D in coverage, you're actually in the best position to join the rush. So when the play gets broken out, let's say it gets broken out here on the strong side, so the winger actually gets the puck and he starts making a play, the weak side winger engages, you're, you're about 10 feet or more higher than the centerman. So you can join the rush to create initial, an initial numerical advantage. So what you want to do though is you want to attack going up in line with the dots on the weak side. So if the play is going out this way, you're going to go in line with the dots this way. Your centerman is going to try to join the rush, but he's going to come through the middle of the ice or the quickest way in which he can get into the, into the rush to create the numbers. What happens though is when when you're the D, you want to be here. And the reason you want to be here is for two reasons. One, because you're harder to pick up on the back check, because most players or most teams will have their third, their F3, their high man. His job is to back check through the middle of the ice. So he's back and he's looking for that next forward threat. If you're the D and you get to the outside here in line with these dots, it's harder for him to pick you up because he's not looking for you over there. So you're now a legitimate threat here on the outside. The other reason why it's important to be able to go up the dots is because if there's a, if there's a situation that occurs where there's a turnover, you now can fold to the middle of the ice and be able to defend. It's a very natural move for you to do that, fold towards the middle of the ice, and again, now you're protecting in the middle of the ice. And that makes a big difference. If you were coming up the middle of the ice or you know, jo trying to join the rush here on the strong side and the play turns over, you might be, and you see this all the time with uh, young defensemen, they fold towards the outside. So now you're outside the dots and you're giving up that space in the middle. Playing the dots and understanding the dots uh, as a tactical maneuver where it's an actual purposeful movement on your part will speak to your hockey sense. And so if you understand and you make you know, this little subtle play, instead of backing up here, you move towards the dots and get yourself aligned with the dots. To the educated eye that's coming to watch you play, or looking for a player who can play at the next level, or looking for a guy who can complement another player that they have on their team, they're looking for someone who has hockey sense, then you're their guy because you've put yourself in a position where you're doing habits which represent what the demands are at the next level.